What's going on? Episode 13 of the Listen Show. So we're going to be talking about drums, but really just the kick and snare for the most part. We are going to touch on finding your sweet spot and making sure your groove isn't too crowded. Honestly, I had to go back and make sure I was following my own advice in this episode when I was making it because most of the songs we are going to look at, the drums really aren't doing a whole lot. But like I said, the key is finding balance and finding a sweet spot. The drums don't have to do much because usually if if one person is writing a, a piece of music, usually all the instruments are going to work together anyways just because it's one person writing the music. So uh, the first concept I want to talk about is something called the pocket. This is something professional drummers always talk about. They say to stay in the pocket and that every, and everything that applies to drummers, you can apply to production. Drummers always say that your pocket is what's going to get you the gig. And what I will say about that is in production, a solid pocket that has a, a, a groove, a good groove is powerful. It's like I said before, knowing when to stop is an art form. The idea of a pocket is that the drummer, or if you are producing your, yourself, the drums stay in their lane and they don't do too much while supporting the rest of the band. So it's kind of a three-prong thing, the pocket. The first facet of it is your timing. And that more has to do with live drumming, so we're not gonna really talk about that. The next is your feel. Are you swung when it needs to be swung? Are you matching the feel of the rest of the band? Do you know the genre? Also, when it comes to live drumming, did you pick the right groove and all that kind of stuff? But again, that's kind of more live drumming. But the thing that you really should take from it is, and that has to do with producing, is are you staying in your lane and making sure you're not stepping on anybody's feet and making sure you're not doing too much? That's the real key to the pocket. Your, you know, your timing is solid, all that. And then on top of that, you're playing exactly what you need to play. You're not doing too much. You're not showing off too much, all that kind of stuff. And the same thing goes into production when you want to find your sweet spot. Do you know when to stop? When is your groove enough? What, what percussion do you need? Is it empty? You know, all that kind of stuff plays into the pocket. Sound selection is also going to help uh, with the groove. The right snare and the right kick are going to fuse together just off sonics alone. When you keep in the pocket and lay a solid foundation, everything else can just lock in. And an easy way to study and develop your groove is to study like Motown, funk, African music like Wizkid and um, Burna Boy. So yeah, first song I'm gonna get into is 24 Hours What You Like. In this song, the snare keeps the song moving. The tempo is slower and the melody has space in it, and it's more of a conservative track. The snare stays constant through the main groove. Then when it when they take it away, the track sounds so much more open and spacious, almost like you're kind of free floating until they bring the snare back in. The kick is backing up the snare and adding a bit more emotion and emphasis. It's almost like punctuation, but a kick will always put emphasis on something. And lastly, the kick being so sporadic in this song makes it so that when it comes in, it's felt without having to be so in your face. Like sometimes with hip hop music, um, the kick is is like, well, the idea is to like really thump the speakers, you feel me? But uh, it, and something like that, R&B, the kick doesn't have to be so, so thumpy, it just has to be felt. Next song is by Hetty One. The song is called Both. Um, I was just watching Timberland stream on Twitch and he was listening to people's music submissions and he said, uh, people always try to do too much. And this song is a perfect example of finding your sweet, sweet spot and doing minimal. The foundation of the snare on two and four and the kick on one and three is like the most basic 
thing in the world. Or in this song, the kick is just on one and it's on the end of three. And that's basic foundation level. And you can keep basic stuff like that, but there has to be something else in the song that's gonna push the song forward. But in this song, um, the simple uh, addition of an extra snare on the uh of two helps keep the song moving forward and keeps the groove from feeling sluggish. The whole song is an example of a sweet spot and not doing too much. Again, instruments are where they need to be, they're doing what they need to do, and they're not doing too much more. It's that simple. Some filtering and uh, things the engineer is gonna do and some extra sprinkles here and there keep it interesting and keep the song moving forward. So you really do not have to do too much. Put down a solid groove and then pick your spots to add in little things. Um, the last song we are going to go over is Say Something by Timbaland. This song is about accents and ghost notes as far as kick and snare go. A metaphor is like, it's like poetry when they say unstressed and stressed syllables. That's exactly what the accenting in the, it's cause it's not really ghost notes. It's just non-accented, non-accented hits. Honestly, while I was making this, I was having trouble putting words into what I wanted to say about this. But this difference in felt and heard and thumpy and punchy, knowing the when, where, whys and hows of the different situations of music and having a proper command over them and knowing where to plug what is gonna separate you as a producer. And in this song, you'll notice that the bass is real heavy on the one, and then after that, it's kind of lighter. That is what's gonna keep, that is what keeps this song very, very light. Like, Timbaland's drums are really hard and like really impacty and really heavy, but he keeps it light by keeping the bass not too thumpy all the time. Like I said, it's just on one, it's a quick thump, and then after that, it sounds like he has two kicks layered. One is more of a, a thump or a punch, like a, a quick attack. And the other one is like more of a, a tail. It's more gonna be felt. And it sounds like at on the one, he combines both the kicks and then he leaves the, the punch out of it. So it's more of just a tail. So one is heard, the one is heard, and then the other one is more, f no, vice versa. The one is felt and heard, and then the, after that is just kind of heard. So just while you're listening to it, just try to imagine if all the kicks were accented. Like his drums, like I said, his drums are really heavy, so if you can imagine all the, the kicks after being accented, the song would be very heavy. Now, whether that's good or bad or whatever it is, it's really more of an artistic choice. So like I said, on the one, Tim cuts out the bass and has the kick really thumpy. So on the one, he cuts out the bass and it's just a kick. And then after that, he brings the bass back in and he either has like a pad play a higher octave or uh, he adds in a, another pad and it's almost like a scream. The beat is really going through emotions and that is what the song is about, right? It's kind of like a back and forth between the bass and the synths. And I'm sure Timbaland wasn't thinking in this much detail about it, but when he was creating, but what you feel in your mood and uh, how you think will glue together your product, whether you intend to or not. A lot of things you'll just start creating and things will come together. That's just because of, of who you are in that since you're the only person creating or even if you do collab like there's things that we feel vibes that we give off we can all read them and we can and your vibe will be imprinted on the song whether you intend it to or not so yeah so that is it um as always listening listen to, in the description below hold me accountable Tell me what I can do better and thank you for listening.